Good morning and welcome to TaylorMade on EmpowerMe.tv. I'm your host, Brian Rada, and today we are joined by creative consultant, filmmaker, and celebrity stylist, Miss Jen Kleiner. Good morning, Jen. Hi, Brian. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we are thrilled to have you here because there's a lot of fun fashion to talk about, so let's get right to it. First up, we have Lady Gaga. A great article came out um, yesterday. She was she attended the uh, 2013 Women of the Year Awards um, on Monday at Carnegie Hall, and Lady Gaga used the opportunity to actually slam glamour for their use of airbrushing. She's quoted as saying, "I felt my skin looked too perfect. I felt my hair looked too soft. I do not look like this when I wake up in the morning." It is fair to write about the change in your magazines, but what I want to see is the change in your covers. When the covers change, that's when culture changes. Well, as a sidebar, I think this is very interesting because uh, Lady Gaga, as you know, was also on the cover last year on Vogue, on a Vogue cover, and she actually sidestepped the issue when a lot of people were up in controversy over the airbrushing. Here she looks like a Russian Cupid doll, if you ask me, but not necessarily 100% Lady Gaga. She's totally airbrushed, uh, really refined, and just a little too perfect. She didn't mention anything about the image on Vogue, but this year at the awards ceremony, when she was honored by Glamour, took the time and the opportunity to give her thoughts about airbrushing. Well, I think this is a very interesting conversation. We continue to see women um, on the covers looking very aspirational. This is a very interesting cultural conversation. And, you know, Jen, when, when you go to the checkout line and you see images like this on magazines, does that make you want to purchase the magazine or not? Well, I think um, usually the reason I want to purchase a magazine has to do with the article or who's featured. But uh, in terms of the airbrushing question, I think it's a huge debate. And I feel like I understand both sides. <clears throat> There's, you know, magazines are, are selling and they're also artistic. So there's formalism, which is a great way to sell a product. Mm -hmm. And then there's realism. And realism usually isn't used to sell clothes or products. Mm -hmm. But realism is something that a lot of people are looking for and more and more craving in our culture. And I think Lady Gaga speaks to that in terms of wanting more authentic self-expression, which mm -hmm. is not covering ourselves up with who we think we should be, but who we really are. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Well, I think we're going to continue to see um, major celebrities, you know, fight against this trend of looking too perfect and this idea of an idealized perfectionism. While I do think magazine covers should be aspirational, I think sometimes they go a bit too far. And I'm really glad that Lady Gaga uh, called Glamour out. Um, maybe not necessarily the most appropriate moment at the awards ceremony, but um, I think it is important for her to call attention to the, to the issue. All right, moving on. Next up, we have uh, I own amends to, to a lovely lady from last week. Um, as you know, last week we covered Drew Barrymore at a LACMA event, and I just want to say a heartfelt apology. I immediately found out after last week's show that Drew Barrymore is with child. And, um, you know, I just want to say that I, uh, my critique of her in this outfit, uh, had I known she was pregnant, I would have been um, not so harsh and critical. Um, which I think also brings us to another topic that lighting and angling can be very huge when you're at an event and you can see a star or somebody who's working the red carpet look very differently depending upon the lighting or the angle. I found another image, I went back into the archives and found another image here where she looks very, uh, you know, much more, um, more, much more like herself, I would say. I still think she looks like Stevie Nicks a little bit these days. Um, this is a lovely dress by uh, Lillian Westwood. Um, it's more of a caftan, and you know I think this is a really, really interesting time to talk about you know women who are pregos, as my sister would say. She calls them pregos, and still rocking it out on the red carpet. I think this particular dress was still a little too hippie for me, but you know um, kudos to Drew to you know actually acknowledge her pregnancy and still uh, head out to public events anyway. Jen, um, what do you think about Drew? Do you think she looked like herself in this image? 
Um, I totally think she looked like herself. I think what's great about Drew is that she's not afraid to take risks. She's an amazing stylist, Lee Harris, and she's often seen on the red carpet trying different dramatic looks. And I love her for that. I love her for not being safe and being true to herself. And I think that there's another conversation that we can have at another time about why we feel that women on the red carpet need to be dressed in such tight-fitting, form-fitting clothes to be sexy. I don't think there's anything wrong with a woman looking beautiful in an outfit that's not mm -hmm. completely form-fitting. And I think many women do. In other cultures, women wear saris or caftans and they're celebrated. In our culture, if you show up on the red carpet and you're not wearing something skin tight, then you're often, you know, criticized. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's not fair. Got it. Okay. I, I hear you. Well, to that aim, we um, Jen actually brought in three uh, different images of, uh, as I like to call them in Spanish, they would say, uh, uh, senoras que esta embarazada. It means they are women who are with child. And Jen brought in three images here from the last couple years of some uh, celebrities who are rocking the, the, the red carpet while with child. First up, we have Jen, Jen Garner. I think she looks really lovely here in this red. It's really simple and elegant, um, cut right at the knees. I love that she's showing leg. And you know her hair is tossing and free flowing there, and I think a real strong, solid statement color does her well. Next up, we have Natalie Portman. Uh, this is very Grecian. I think you know this is obviously during her tour um, of all the events uh, while she was nominated for the Black Swan. I think this is probably the best dress that she wore during that award season. Very Grecian again, a solid color here, and you know a nice accent with the gold, and really just just Grecian, uh, you know, very very European and sophisticated. And finally, we have uh, Miss Michelle Moynihan, who I love to see is rocking the red carpet at a web series event. This is an event for Crackles, so we're seeing again um, a nice digital event here, and she's got again a solid color with some really nice black black boots there so all three of these women I think really chose lovely images um, still you know uh, f there's some flow to them but obviously um, not hiding the fact that they're pregnant um, and you know a nice combination of some strong colors there so um, Moving on, so what if you know you you actually do you know want to keep some 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 of the free flowing going, but also want to feel a little tighter and a little more snug and a little and get some slimming going on? Well, of course there are many options for you available on the market. One of the things that is out there, as we all know, uh, we we did a little bit of research. Actually, Jen did the research. I don't want to take all the credit. We have um, first up a great item here from. Um, Bethany Frankel, this is Skinny Girl. Uh, this is a slim fitted, uh, lovely piece here uh, to wear under your clothing. Body suit. Body suit, thank you. Next up, we have the traditional Spanx. Um, I know many women, the Spanx is a friend of many, many a lady who want to um, get that trimming look. And um, if you can't afford Spanx, which retails around 99, you can actually go to Amazon.com and find this little piece here, which is called Heavenly Body Wear for 26. Uh, I think it's also a nice option if you're looking to slim slim down. Uh, Jen, what are your what do you think about you know the the idea of uh, body wear, slim slimwear in general? Uh, I love swimwear. Uh, not swimwear, slimwear. Slimwear. I love swimwear and slimwear. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're very similar. Uh, what's great about slimwear is that it smooths out lines. So even if you're a thin woman, we can all get a little lines in places, especially uh, if you're sitting or moving around. And what's great about the slimwear is that it just smooths everything out. You don't see panty lines. You get to feel really tight and sexy. And why I picked these images is because they're really sexy pieces. It's not your granny's girdle that you're wearing anymore. Mm -hmm. And also, um, the reason I started wearing these was actually because my chiropractor recommended it. Any women who have large tatas like myself might appreciate the fact that your back can hurt at the end of the day, especially if you're walking in heels or you're moving around all day. And what's great about a body bra or a body suit is that it holds your posture up and it keeps your body contained and it helps with your core. So you don't have a back ache at the end of the day, which is great and why I often use them. Got it. Do, does slimmer also help with the... Uh with the ladies, as it were, if, if, I think you know what I'm referring to here. <laughs> Slimwear can help with that, right? Kind of push them up a little bit and, you know, 
Oh, to I mean, bras and slimwear are very similar. So they're all used to help keep our women perky and tight. Okay. And, uh, you know, and they work great. Okay. Excellent. Well, whether you're pregnant or not, uh, looking for that trimming look or not, there's a lot of options available for you out in the marketplace right now. From Spanx uh, to Skinny Girl to Heavenly Bodywear, check them out. Next up, we have a new trend for spring 2014. Uh, geometrics are back in. We're seeing a lot of late, um, a lot of designers coming up with their spring 2014 um, haute couture uh, designer gown lines. And geometrics, stark blacks and whites are the name of the game right now. Uh, Women's Wear Daily just covered covered this uh, this this week, and we have a few fun images here. First up, we have Carmen. Um, actually, we have Probel Gurungs. Um, I would like to call this Venus Rising. <laughs> it has a bit of a Star Trek theme for me here, but it's it's really stark and black, uh, really lovely. Um, you know, it's a silk and satin gown, so there is some femininity and soft softness there amongst the starkness with the fabric. Uh, I think it's very futuristic, very modern. Next up, we have Carmen Mark Valvos's. Um, this is a beaded polyester mesh silk gown, and you know we got the uh, you know uh, horizontal stripes here, which I think you know is not necessarily the most slenderizing thing um, when you when you wear horizontal, right? I mean, isn't to the isn't the traditional to go vertical is more um, slenderizing these days. But, you know, if you've got the body, you can rock the, the stark horizontal lines. And finally, we have Angel, um, Angel Sanchez's, uh, An Angel Sanchez's uh, really unique piece here, going full on geometric, hand-beaded nylon tool gown um, coming out in spring 2014. Uh, which one of those dresses is your fave, Jen? Uh, the latter. The last one? Stunning. That's an incredible piece. Mm -hmm. It's the bodice. just striking. Yeah, the bodice is phenomenal. Okay. Well, I, I, I think we're going to see that trend of Stark coming out in spring 2014. So, you know, now's the time to, you know, w and when winter approaches, uh, maybe not to get rushed to that tanning salon so soon. Uh, so you can rock that sort of mod New York look with a dark white and black Stark geometric look. That's almost all the time we have for today here on TaylorMade. But before we do, we ask each of our guest co-hosts to bring in something fun and really that they really enjoy. That's their favorite item from their personal wardrobe. We call this segment Under the Feather Boa. So first up, uh, we always bring out the old uh, feather boa here. We'll pull it off. And what do we have here today, Jen? What'd you bring? And I feel like a little inappropriate right now touching <laughs> this is what I feel like, actually. <laughs> this is my favorite body bra. Okay. Wow. Here we so, go. So this is one uh, similar to the Spanx and the one available on Amazon that's for underneath a dress. Okay. So what's great about this is that you have this lovely lingerie slash slimming line you know, releasing a body bra, mm -hmm. and uh, and you get to feel beautiful underneath. Okay, wow. Well, I think this is. Uh, I I <laughs> I knew at some point on the show I'd be wear, <laughs> I'd be handling women's bras. I just didn't think it would be so soon. But uh, this is really lovely, actually, and I could see how it would. You know, when you're kind of snug in there, it actually probably makes you feel more confident, and uh, you know, in in would be a nice addition under any any piece of clothing. So, well, good to know, Jen. I feel a lot closer to you now. Um, maybe more so than I ever needed or wanted to. But uh, thank you very much for that. <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have for TaylorMade on EmpowerMe.tv. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, you can follow us on Facebook, um, or friend us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at, at TaylorMadeBrian. Before we go, Jen, where can people find you? Hey guys, you can find me at jenkleiner.com or Instagram, jenkleiner. Excellent. Until tomorrow, we'll see you here tomorrow, first thing, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, enjoy your day. Be styling and fashionable. For more TaylorMade on EmpowerMe.tv, please subscribe. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.